point that said when I mean, Emily, sh uh, the goddess of beauty, Barbie is what they're talking about, but it said when Emily showed her to me, she said she's meant to be the Greek goddess Aphrodite, but she looks like your mummy. I don't know, it's <laughs> just so cute to me. Okay, I want to read one of these. It says, Anna has a different dad, but we have the same surname. Mom decided and Trevor didn't argue. In the dining hall at school, I explained to Callum, Trevor is Anna's dad, but not mine. Callum asked, if you have different dads, isn't she your half-sister? When I get home, I ask, Mummy, are we only half? Don't let anyone tell you you are half anything. You and Anna are simply brother and sister. Don't let anyone tell you she's your half-sister. Don't let anyone tell you that you're half black and half white, half Cypriot and half Jamaican. You are a full human being. It's never as simple as being half and half. You were born in Britain. You need to make space for what British means. What it means to you to be British, Cypriot, and, and Jamaican too. But it's only for you to decide. So far I'm really enjoying this. Like I like that the style, I think in the Poet X, it read more like slam poety. In this one, it's very much a story. Like each of the poems reads as a story and yet somehow really works as a poem on its own as well. I really like this style and it's, I mean, as novels in verse are, it's a pretty quick read so far. So I'm done with chapter one, I'm moving on to chapter two, uh, which I mean is only that much, but I've only just begun. And yeah, so far I'm really liking it. It started with him, it, like the first chapter was very much childhood. And we're going to be moving in, I think, to probably getting into middle school by the time we finish chapter two. I also kind of like that instead of chapters, they have these pages like this. This one is sand castles, but it's very much like this is the next section. So it's like this is the next chapter, but then done kind of how you'd see it in a poetry book. It's very cute. I'm really enjoying it so far. <laughs> So I just got to the part where now he's at this uh, special music school and he's been asked to fight and this is such an interesting section because these two bigger boys are like telling him and this other boy from the choir to fight and he starts fighting and he slaps the boy and then stands up. And I think that's an interesting thing. I think that happens more often than the way they do it in movies where you know like either one person starts by standing up just back out or, or they'll just fight. I think it happens way more often that you think, well, I'll just like go this far and like follow what the crowd is saying. And then I don't think everyone is always like strong enough to then stand back up. But I also thought it was really interesting that he, after he shouted no, he was able to push his way between the two boys. And it's just like, I don't know, it all seems, I feel like this is the kind of story that's like, it's not, a Hollywood version of the way things are. It's, that's how things go. Yeah, it just struck me. I also like that even though they had established that he had eaten all those Skittles cookies, which by the way, that sounds disgusting. Skittles cookies sounds gross. Maybe it's not, but it sounds disgusting. But then when he said that he threw um, throw up rainbow violently on the platform, I thought that's, that's such a good metaphor. <laughs> Because they've already established by this point that he likes boys, but to have it phrased that way. So sometimes, sometimes the phrasing in here is really cute. I like it. Okay, I don't own the curious incident of the dog in the night, but I read the Fault in Our Stars and I also, I was just so tickled. I have the book that he's reading at lunchtime. <laughs> yeah, the completed collected poems of Maya Angelou. I've got it. <laughs> There's this little text part, and mostly it's just the, the little vomiting emoji had me laughing so hard. That's so cute. This is such a fast read. I've probably only been here, what, like half an hour? Well, maybe an hour. I've been here like an hour. I'm on page 90. Maybe that's slow, actually, for this. 
This is such a heartwarming story so far. Like, there's a lot of books still, so things could go downhill, but so far it's just so cute. So we've gotten a few of the interactions with him and his grandmother, but I liked this part. So Josh's uncle, it's like a family friend, they call him uncle, is Jamaican, and so Josh has grown up with somewhat Jamaican influence. I've only every now and then like heard him because he'll do the thing like what if he's talking on the phone to someone from back home, he'll he'll switch into the like Jamaican accent, the Jamaican dialect more. But yeah, so the voice really switches. But so Josh will talk about like the really like Jamaican things he'll do. But one of them is it says Grammy uh, Granny B kisses her teeth. And I was like, that particular, like, motion and sound is something that he does do. <laughs> and I was just like, that must be, like, pretty Jamaican. I thought that was really funny. Daisy snaps back. My mom is mixed, and she doesn't even say so. She only talked about, oh, she only talked to me about it once. I've never met her Jamaican family. I'm not ashamed, but I have nothing to claim. Nothing handed down to me. It's not something people can see you to look at me. Maybe if I'm with my mom, but I never am. On my own, I just look like a white girl with a tan, and that suits me just fine. I don't want to explain myself to people. I've seen how you have to do it, how people ask you questions like they have the right to see your family tree. I don't want that. I just want to be me. It's really powerful. Okay, I'm on page 162. Uh, it's been really good so far. There's been a lot of really interesting things happening, but I got to the part where he says... Mum hardly speaks any Greek to us at home. She always said she wanted us to fit in and be British. Here in Cyprus, Anna and I can't access family conversations without her translations. This is something like my husband and I have talked about to some extent, where like being bilingual really opens you up to a lot of like possibilities. He wasn't really raised learning two languages even though he could have been. And like his mom could have been better at teaching them she could have uh, also been better about learning she said it's just one of those things like especially you hear about immigrant families come over and they want their kids to learn the language here so they'll fit in here and like that mindset is so it's correct in one way and then it bites you in the butt in another way it's just such an interesting thing being bilingual is such a benefit and it's one of those things that like I really being bad at picking up languages, I really didn't have an opportunity for it, but Josh kind of regrets that he did have opportunity for it and wasn't really pushed in that direction. And we've talked about how like, we'd want our children to grow up speaking more than one language. Like we'd want to encourage that and we'd want to try and teach that in our house. You know, speaking or not speaking a language really closes you off. Like language is such a huge, it's such a huge barrier. It's such a huge like key to getting into different societies like you think about there's those uh videos that every now and then pop up at least for me on youtube about the guy who um just picks up languages really well and goes in and like speaks to people in their own language like in restaurants i think i don't remember where it is i yeah but if you've seen them you know what i'm talking about it's just like he's just got this extra key to open up these friendships and these situations with people that a lot of us just don't have that key and that just being able to speak the native language of somebody opens up a whole different like it's an it's an instant in you're instantly uh an us instead of a them and having to be a them and then you know relate to people and become friends with people it's an extra barrier and it's one of those things that's like any opportunity to be more of an us in cultures that you're like not maybe maybe your primary world you're living in is just such a benefit anyway i was just thinking about that just now and really sad that i have i struggle very hard learning languages but i'm always like really proud of myself when i do understand something and i try but at the same time like it's hard, it's something you have to work for, it's something I think I need to work harder at again. Because I can, you know, understand just a little bit of Spanish and Japanese. And I was trying really hard to learn German for a while. And I could do better for all three of those languages, even though they're not similar. They're not similar. Trying to like, for, for some reason, for a little bit, I tried to like study Japanese and German at the same time. It's hard on your brain, <laughs> but 
it also it grants access to more things to understand more so I'd like to go back and do some more of that pull out my Duolingo for this year I might do that <music> about 300 pages in and I have to say I don't know if writing wise this book is my favorite like subject matter a plus themes generally a plus but like just on like a writing level I wonder if Michelle noticed kind of the same thing as me but just like it's very telly and I think I feel a little more disappointed that the the breakup of it it doesn't feel like poems in themselves it just feels like narrative that's broken up for some reason I feel like it almost doesn't need to be it the like writing and reading of it is a little bit telly and so it's very much like I don't know it's almost like middle grade level with like YA to new adult little content I don't know but it becomes more obvious when then there is a little bit that is a poem it's like I feel like when I go for an album verse that's more of what I sign up for like I don't dislike it by any means. I think I just wanted it to be a little more poetic and it very much isn't that and it reads more like it doesn't have to be broken into the poems so I just got to a part where he names there's just so many names and like I recognize most of the names but there's a part of me that's like standing there on stage and saying all of these names in alphabetical order by first name which is actually a weird choice you know it's a really weird choice alphabetical it looks good on the page but in terms of like memorization who would remember you would alphabetize them by last name okay i don't know i don't know somehow that like took me out of it i was just like all of these people are important and I understand the sentiment but that is a humongous list of names to just remember and say on stage <laughs> and like I've been to a couple drag performances but like with the poem at the beginning and then the act and then this huge list of names how well do you you have to have quite a presence to hold the audience through this I felt like the strength in this book was in the first half because now there was this part where after the performance Jack is back and there's a section kind of going over everything and then it says but that's not what happened that was just a sweet fantasy and I'm like how much of it was a fantasy where does the fantasy go back to just this part of this poem just the poem part after the performance like just the last few poems like what was a fantasy we're almost at the end of the book we're on to the last section. It was literally answered for me after the turn of the section. It's just every other time the sections have been like big time jumps, but it was literally answered immediately after, so no need to have panicked on that front. Okay, it's time for my wrap up of everything. I finished reading The Black Flamingo last night and I really enjoyed it. I was, it was really fun, it was really good. I have to say, I think I've touched on it already. My final opinions probably come down to the fact that subject matter wise, I really liked it. I thought the whole like first half with his childhood was really strong, it was really engaging, I really enjoyed it. I, I actually thought the parts that were the black flamingo, I know that they were the point, but I felt like they were the the, the least engaging story-wise. I felt like the narrative started to get a little less just engaging. It got a little more telly. This, it was a little bit of a prescriptive book. I definitely didn't have the same feeling that I had when I was reading The Poet X, which was that I was reading someone's diary, that this was a, a glimpse into someone's life written in poetry. I felt more like, I think I felt when I read Out of the Dust, where it felt like this was just a narrative, maybe like even a middle grade narrative, although the subject matter in this one is definitely not middle grade, but just like a short narrative that was just broken up to be really long. 
there were places in this one I questioned if it needed to be broken up into that style just because the poetry wasn't the poetry was an important part of the character but it wasn't like the vital part of the character it wasn't the thing we're meant to go away with the poetry was sort of another incidental part of another incidental characteristic another incidental part of him so did it have to be a novel in verse i would say with this one unlike with the poet x where it was like there was no choice it had to be that way this one it wasn't detrimental to it i just didn't think it always had to be i thought i liked it it, it ended and I think that's kind of how life is too, like things end with no closure, but it, it, it kind of felt like there was no closure. I felt like at the end, with all of the moments that were like big and impactful, I did feel a little bit like we've come all this way together and now you're sort of preaching at me a little bit. So I don't know. I don't know if this is my favorite book. I've already recommended it to some friends because I think they would really enjoy just the subject matter overall. But, uh, and it, I love the characters. I love just the, the complexity. I loved how relatable the characters were. I loved how I was immediately taken back to, you know, how people were in you know, elementary school and how people were in middle school. Like it was so clear, like I, the growing, growing up part, like everything before college, I thought was phenomenal honestly I thought was so good so interesting it was the college part which is which is really the last half of the book I don't know that it was my favorite part I guess is all I'm saying I'll be interested to see what Michelle Flores says about it I liked it so much it were so many good parts I loved all of the descriptions of you know just what it's like to be him and you know his journey through figuring himself out and through different characters kind of being real people like Daisy was an incredible character it was interesting and like I feel like you take away a lot from a book like this like it gives you a lot but I also felt like some of it was like I wanted to take more and they were instead being like no I'm putting up a poster rather than like giving you a feast. I don't know if that <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense, but uh, I'll be interested to hear more about Michelle Flores's take on it because I think it'll be interesting to see what she took away. I think we this we were both going into this one completely blind. This is a new book. I this one came out. Oh, <laughs> this one came out last year in 2020. I really haven't heard anything else about it, haven't heard anyone else. I would say if you like just like a, a impactful read about someone who uh, is really finding themselves and you're really interested in kind of the growing up and coming into coming of age into especially LGBTQ plus culture, uh, especially if you're interested. There's some really interesting parts when he's getting into drag where he like describes what drag is where I felt like even though it felt a little bit telly, I was learning a lot and I wish they'd really dove into that a little bit more, I'll be honest. I felt like I needed just a little bit more, just just a touch at the end. I just wanted a little bit of something. I wanted some, some closure in some way and I didn't get it in the way I think my heart was wanting by that point, but it was still really good. I liked it and like I said, I'm excited to hear what Michelle Flores has to say and her perspective about it. I have not watched her vlog yet, although I saw that it went up because I am a little late getting this ending for it to post the video. It's almost ready. I just have to put this part on. Hopefully you will join us this Sunday the 10th at 12 o'clock Pacific Standard Time, which is 3 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. And we're going to be doing a chat about the Black Flamingo and I hope to see you there. Whether or not you've read the book, I'm really interested to see if anyone else has, if you heard about it, what your thoughts and opinions are. If you need to like bookmark us and come back to the live chat later after you have read it, definitely do that. We would appreciate that so much. I will definitely be looking for comments in the future as well because I'm just interested to see what other people thought about this one too. So let me know your thoughts down below. Uh, definitely join us for the live stream on Sunday and I will see you then. Bye.